All right. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a good day and I hope everything is fine with you and just staying healthy. All right. So today we're going to talk about reproductive parameters in cattle. All right. In, in beef cattle, actually, they're very easy. And uh, dairy cows is a little bit more complex. So we're going to do the dairy cows and then next uh, week that we're going to talk about uh, issue synchronization, we can, can talk a little bit about beef cows. All right. So the main goal of a dairy farm is to be profitable, right? To make money, but at the same time, be sustainable, right? Be socially, environmentally, and economically sustainable and provide the best care of the cows, right? Because the cows are actually the queens of the farm. You know, if, you, if an animal is not in their best welfare, she's not going to produce, she's not going to be uh, capable to produce milk and be efficient. So the farmer is going to lose. So it's in the best interest of farmers to really take care of their animals. Now, whenever we're doing that, whenever there's, uh, uh, you have your business, you need to somewhat collect data, right? In order to tell you how you are doing It's For instance, in classes, right? Whenever you take a class, brand new class, you are going to, during the various points on the semester, you're going to take classes, you're going to take the quizzes and exams and papers, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that is, they are going, you are going to get back a numerical value, which is just a number, technically, right? And that number was going to tell you how you are doing, what is your performance. So the same thing happens actually in farms. We have different types of parameters. We have different types of numbers. Some of those numbers, they tell you how good the reproduction is in a farm, how good the production is in a farm, and how good is the money in a farm, right? All of those are going to be numbers that are going to be valuable because they're going to provide information for that particular farm to assess where are they in their main goal. Goals, all right. So the main goal is to have, again, to have a profitable farm and sustainable. All right. So breaking down a little bit, these um, um, reproductive parameters, maybe you remember some of these graphs is from Animal Science 101. So I hope you remember. If not, it's because your professor suck. But anyway, so the pregnancy in cattle is usually between nine and nine and a half months. So that's the reason is the variation, right? Usually before two months before she's due or about 210 days in pregnancy, we're going to stop milking that particular animal, right? That's what we call the dry period. And during that dry period, we're going to allow that mammary gland to replenish, right? It's going to regress. It's going to decrease in size. And those alveoli present in the mammary gland, there's going to uh, they're going to replenish in order to start a new lactation in about two months, all right? So also during that dry period, you're going to adjust somewhat the animal to the new diet. You want an animal to gain body condition score. You want an animal to provide nutrients for the fetus. Remember, during the last third gestation, that's when the fetus grows the most, all right? Between four two and four weeks before she's due, we're going to move her to a new pen called the close-up Pen. That pen is going to be, or is designed, or that particular management is designed to adjust the cow to what is going to be the new diet, right? We usually we use DCAT diet, which is dietary cutting onion difference diets, which they are going to induce a subclinical hypocalcemia. So they are going to teach, these diets are going to teach the cow to remove calcium from their bones, all right? So whenever lactation starts, you know, she needs a huge amount of calcium, but she already has it on the bloodstream. So you, with that DECA diet, you reduce the probability and the risk of animals to have hypocalcemia. All right. So the animal gives birth, right? That usually initiates lactation. Actually, lactation starts about two, three days before she's due, but that's colostrum. But the mature phase usually is around uh, after birth, two days after birth, right? So that's the beginning of lactation. Then the producers is going to give a time to the animal, a time that is called the voluntary waiting period. During this particular time, a lot of things has needs to happen, right? So the uterus, which is huge in a cow that just gave birth, needs to return to the normal size. Second, all the remnants of the placenta, they need to get exposed. And actually, there, there's another kind of stuff or debris, cellular debris and mucus and that kind of thing. That's why we call the lochia. Lochia needs to be exposed around 10 days. All right. Also, the animal needs to resume ovarian activity. So that means that she needs to start showing heat again and she needs to ovulate and she needs to be healthy. 
All right, so all of these four things needs to occur during the voluntary weight period. So the job of the producers is to provide good nutrition and make, sh make sure that that animal is healthy. This period varies among dairies. In some, anim in some farms, they can go to 45 days. Some other farms, they can go 50, 60, 70 days. The maximum that I have seen is 70 days, all right? But anyway, that varies. And after that, we're going to start breeding the cow or attempting to breed the cow, attempting to inseminate the cow. Next week, we're going to talk about some strategies that actually some producers use, which is pre-synchronized cattle during the voluntary weight period. But that will be next week. All right. After the animal pass, the voluntary weight period, the waiting period, that cow is considered to be eligible. All right. So she's going to be considered to be good to go, good to inseminate. So this is an important number because a lot of our parameters are based upon on the number of cows that are eligible. All right. Then hopefully she's going to get pregnant by 150 days, which that, that will give you a pretty good uh, calving interval. But some producers can go up to 200 days. 150 days is kind of ideal. 200 days is all right. OK, so. Standard lactation length, you know that is 305 days. And between the voluntary weight period, whenever she gives birth, until she is considered to be pregnant, that's why we call the days open, all right? From calving until the time that she conceived or she got pregnant. Average days open. And the calving interval is just the amount of time or amount of days that pass between one calving and the next calving. Does that make sense? So this is just a basic kind of overview of some of the things that happen in cattle. All right. So the distribution of cows in our core according to the stage of lactation. Here, you know, you have the classical uh, peak of lactation, right? You have standard lactation, 305 days. That's the reason I put it, 305 days. And then we have the dry period. How many cows should be on each stage of lactation on your herd in order to be considered healthy? Usually, it's about 20% of your herd should be between 0 and 60 days. 30 to 40 percent should be in between 60 and 200 days and 25 to 30 percent on the last third of the gestation or the lactation. Right. And you're expecting about 50 percent of your whole herd to be in the dry period. Now, there are going to be some cows that actually they don't get pregnant in time. So they're going to be delaying a little bit. So animals that have more than 305 days of lactation, that should be less than 10 percent of their overall farm. All right. Now, lactation curve, again, this is a productive parameter. Usually, the first lactation animals, the animals that they just give in birth for first time, usually the peak of lactation is early, right? Because they don't produce a lot of milk. Whereas the second lactation and the third lactation are the most profitable animals, right? As you can see, the third lactation, because they produce more milk, they are going to reach the peak of lactation later compared to a first animal. So the most profitable animals is usually the third lactation animals. So this is just a pie chart. And you can see that the percent of the herd that should be on third lactation is about 50%. All right. So that will give you a good dynamic because these animals will eventually leave the farm and then these are going to be moving up. All right. So mature cows should be expected a peak at higher more uh, higher uh, um, milk, a higher um, amount of milk, and later in terms of the days in milk. All right, so we talk about the gestation, right? And then the close up end, which is between four and two weeks before the due date. And then the animals, physiologically speaking, they're going to have something that we call an issues postpartum. And that is normal. It's going to take some days for her to start the resumption of the ovarian activity. So during this time, whenever she, they are going to start somewhat ovulating, that's what uh, some people call silent estrus. So those animals are going to ovulate, but actually they're not going to show heat. So usually you're expecting an animal to have the first corpus luteum around day 20, about day 30, but you're not going to see the heat. All right. Then if she follows the, the rule or she reads the book around day 50, she's going to have her first heat. And that second heat, if you will, or first heat, you are going to be able to see it. All right. So again, after the voluntary weight period, the cow is considered eligible. And here, a lot of people do 
natural heat and then inseminate based upon on observed uh, heat or detected heat, or they do a lot of estrogen synchronization. There are some other strategies in, in which animals that are going to get synchronized or pre-synchronized, what we that's what we call during the voluntary wait period. All right, so some of the reproductive parameters, which are probably the three most important ones in farms, is the heat detection rate, conception rate, and pregnancy rate. All right, you have the definitions right there, but on the next slides, I have an example. All right, so heat detection rate is just the proportion of animals that they are detected in heat compare or divided by the number of animals that are eligible. Let's assume that these, these are 100 cows, all right? So you have rows of 10. So let's say that this particular farm has 100 cows that are already passed the voluntary waiting period, all right? So in a period of 21 days, you're expecting that at least all of them, they're going to show heat, right? Because again, you remember the Easter cycle is about 21. So let's say that all of those in red, they're going to show heat, right? So we have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, uh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty. Out of those a hundred cows, just 40 showed heat during that particular 21 period. So in order to assess what is my heat detection rate, is going to be the number of cows detected in heat, which in this case was 40, over or divided by the total number of cows that are eligible, in this particular case are 100, multiplied by 100, all right? So my heat detection rate is about 40%. All right, national average, 43%. So I'm a little bit below the, the national average. So you're expecting ideally that all 100 cows, they're going to sheet, show heat on those 21 day period, right? Because physiologically speaking, that makes sense. However, cows do not do that. Now, what to check for, for heat? I mean, probably some of you that you are around cows, you already know what a cow does in order to show heat. Usually we have, the, we divide the, the signs in two different ones. Primary signs, which is the, the cow whenever allows another cow or the bull to mount her, all right? So she's in standing heat. That's what we call standing heat or standing mount. But also we have secondary signs. For instance, the presence of mucus, rubbing at the rump, frequent urination, increasing activity. Some people say that also increasing temperature because they are more active. Budding, you know, the animals are kind of forming sexual active groups, right? They kind of they call it hippie groups, right? And some animals, they actually, they, they lick and they smell the genitalia of other cows. So these are just some examples of what happened. For instance, cows in heat, they urinate a little bit more. And the other animals, they can pick up pheromones, right? Budding, in this particular case, these are uh, boss indicus animals, the presence of mucus, right, restless or formation of sexual uh, active groups. Some cows, whenever they are interested in another animal, they're going to rest their chin on the rump of the animal and make sure that she's uh, sexually receptive, all right? Again, a lot of, of different signs. The, the, this is beautiful. Whenever you are going to inseminate a cow and you see the mucus, like, oh, just like amazing, right? Rubbing, for instance, you, this is an experiment that we did that we put tail chalk, uh, chalk uh, tail chalk, sorry. And if the animal gets rubbed, you can see this is almost skin. Actually, it's a little bit, it was a little bit bleeding. So that means that the animal is in heat or the presence of mucus. Here you can see this particular animal did not allow the amount of any other one, but she has mucus. So that means that she's in heat. All right. Some other things, for instance, rubbing on the back of the tail. You can see this is a rough spot already on, on, on the animal. All right. Again, mounting, standing mounting, standing heat is the primary sign. So whenever you see an animal that is standing heat, or allowing the mount from other animal, that's the best. Also, some farms, they have monitor systems. There are many. So there are some others, some that they have 
um, ear tags that they measure the activity. Some of them, they have kind of bracelets, like a Fitbit, right? Some people put tail chalk or tail paint. We put some animals, they have colors that actually they measure the activity. Some other systems, they have actually a device on the rumen that they can assess also activity and number of steps, intravaginal devices, etc., etc., etc. So a lot of those things. And usually what they measure is an increase in the temperature, increasing pH, some of them, increasing activity. All right. So most of the systems that they assess heat in animals, they assess the increase in activity and decrease on the rumination time because the animals are more active, so they have less time to to ruminate, all right? Some other systems, you know, usually the new modern ones, they can assess progesterone on the milk, all right? Now, that brings to an, the second important parameter, which is the conception rate. Conception rate is the number of animals that were inseminated and actually they resulted pregnant. So let's say that out of those 40 cows, the original 40 cows, right? Let's say that after 30 days, because you usually inseminate, and if the animal did not return in heat, you put it in the vet list, which is about 30 to 35 days. So the vet can do either rectal palpation or ultrasonography. Okay. Let's say out of those 40 cows, all of those in, in green, they're going to be diagnosed to be pregnant. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 result pregnant, all right? 35 inseminated because we didn't inseminate all the cows because some of the cows were kind of, uh, they have some issues. But let's say that you inseminate 35, all right? And 19 result pregnant. The formula is number of cows pregnant divided by number of cows that were inseminated in this particular 21 period of time. So in this particular case, because we just inseminate 35 and 19 of those 35 got pregnant, we have a conception rate of 54, which is pretty good. As you can see, these are standard conception rates. Usually mature cows, the first service, they're about 34, 39%. First lactation cows, 47%. Second service, 34, 39. And overall mature cows, one out of three usually gets pregnant. Right. Whereas first lactation cows, about 41% of them, they get pregnant. Now, conception rate depends a lot on the technician, the AI technique, the assessment of the heat. Is it, you are actually inseminated when you are supposed to be inseminated, handling of the semen, health of the animal, of course, the environment, if it's too hot, if it's too cold, etc., etc., and the timing of AI. The national average usually for conception rate is 43%. So if you have a 43%, you are pretty good. You are national average. That brings to that. When to AI a cow, right? That's important to notice. All right. So you remember this. This is your standard the, the estrus length or estrus dynamics in, in terms of the hormones. But during the proestrus, the animals, towards the end of the proestrus, the animals are going to start kind of showing interest in some other animals. And during heat, those animals are going to be actually sexually receptive, right? They're going to form these sexually active groups. They're going to interact with other animals. They're going to allow the mounting of other animals. Maybe she is going to mount other animals, etc. And towards the end, they're not going to... After ovulation, that's it. They are, she's not going to be sexually receptive. So when to inseminate an animal? Usually, we said on class that the estrus lasts between 12 and 24 hours, all right? Let's say that for just an average, let's, let's say that lasts 12 hours, all right? Usually, ovulation is going to occur 24 hour, 12 hours after the end of heat, all right? Or 24 hours at the beginning of heat. So either or, usually you're expecting at the end of the heat, 12 hours, or at the beginning of the heat, 24 hours, 28 hours, all right? So ovulation is going to be in this particular window. So what we do, then the fertile, after ovulation occurs, the egg is going to be kind of fertile for about 10 hours. That's pretty much it, 10, 12 hours, and then they start senescing, and then we have a lot of issues with that particular egg. All right. So usually you want, let's say that the animal is in heat right here. You want to follow the AM PM kind of rule because we know that the semen, at least in, in semen straw, can be alive and can be capable to fertilize an egg between 24 and 30 hours. 
all right? So they, they um, change. So if you inseminate too late, the animal will not be able to get pregnant. So if you observe an animal in heat right here, you are going to inseminate right here. So if you see an animal in the afternoon, let's say it's 5 p.m., just to say something, 5 p.m., you're going to inseminate 12 hours later. All right, so that would be 5 a.m. If you observe an animal in the morning, you're going to disseminate in the evening. So that follows the a.m. p.m. Because you don't know where she is located. Maybe she might be at the beginning. Maybe she might be at the middle, right? So usually you want to have capable fertilizing spermatozoids when the egg arrives to the orbital. That's your goal, all right? So usually you follow the a.m. p.m. That's, that's, that's an important one. All right, that brings the last important, I mean, all of them are important, but this is an uh, important one, the pregnancy rate, which is the proportion of animals that resulted pregnant from all the animals eligible. This is important, all the animals eligible. So on this particular case, remember the red ones were detected in heat, the green ones were ones that were pregnant, and we had 19, all right? So 40 detected in heat, 35 inseminated, 19 resulted pregnant, all right? But we have 100 cows eligible. So the pregnancy rate is the formula is number of cows pregnant over a period of 21 days divided by the number of the total number of cows eligible and multiplied by 100. In this particular case, we have 19 cows resulted pregnant in this 21 period of time over 100 that were eligible, right? Or they were able to get pregnant, but we didn't get them pregnant. So the pregnancy rate is 19%. Now, 19% is actually pretty low. It's kind of average, if you will, all right? Pregnancy rate is a key performance because that indicates how you are detecting heat, how you are breeding animals, and how the animals in terms of the overall health is doing, all right? So this percentage is depending on inseminations, it's depending on many, many different things, all right? So we have, again, a cow pregnancy in nine and a half months. We already discussed this particular thing, right? So this is just to give you an example of days in milk at first heat. Usually you expect in an animal to show heat, or at least you can observe the heat during the voluntary waiting period. And usually days in milk at first service, you want to be close as the end of the voluntary wait period. For instance, if my voluntary wait period is 60 days, I want the first AI at 60, 65, maybe 70 days, right? Very close to that end of the voluntary wait period. And then let's say that you have a second AI, right? And then she didn't return to heat. So I'm going to put that particular animal in the vet list. So that means that the veterinarians, about 30 to 35 days, they're going to bring out just an and they're going to do rectal palpation, and they're going to confirm if she's pregnant or not. That's the pregnancy diagnosis, right? After that, we can assess, okay, number of services per pregnancy, which is another important parameter, right? How many services it took to that animal to get pregnant, also, we can assess if she got confirmed to be pregnant on this AI, we can say, okay, from whenever this happened to the beginning of lactation, does the average stays open, all right? So all the reproductive parameters that we measure in farms is, for instance, percent of the herd pregnant by 150 days. Your goal is to have 75% of your animals, eligible animals to be pregnant by 150 days, all right? Percent of heifers bred and percent pregnant by 15 to 17 months of age, which is important. Usually in heifers, we insist start seminating about 12 to 14 months. You are expecting about 81% of your heifers already be pregnant by 15 to 17 months. Age at first calving, talking about heifers, you want that the majority of your animals to be calving for first time between 20 and 24 months, all right? And you're expecting a really low proportion of animals that are actually giving birth earlier in their life. Percentage of abortion in heifers and cows, I mean, sometimes that happens, but you want to, you expect 0% is ideal, but sometimes animals are aborted, right? Average stays in first service, here depends, you know, because it uh, depends on many different things, it depends on your voluntary work period, etc., etc. but the average, again, is variable. So if you are having, again, as I mentioned, 50 days voluntary work period, you want to inseminate the first 50 to 60. Number of services per pregnancy, again, highly variable. Usually the national average is 2.5, all right? Service or heat intervals, 
usually how long from one heat in service and to the next heat you are expecting about 21 days plus minus some days but sometimes cows they not show heat or you fail to detect the heat on the animals all right average days open the national average is about 165 days which is average all right so production parameters this they, so we move on to production parameters. I'm not going to talk too much about that because that's the scope of some other classes, but you can measure annual milk production, rolling herd, average milk production, etc. All right. So productive parameters, rolling herd average, which is the production of milk standardized by 305 days. You can measure amount of fat, amount of protein, right? And this actually, this is the world record. Sales prowl aftershock. She produces about 78,000. And the average when a cow right now is 20 to 25,000. So she's a really, really outstanding cow. All right. With that, I finish this particular mini presentation. You're going to have an assignment. Please check on your lab and then uh, download the assignment and try to do it. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and your uh, attention to this presentation and please let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.